All right, Arlie, welcome to Empower Network TV today. This is going to be fun. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm really curious because like who doesn't want to live orgasmically in every sense of the word? So can you unpack that before we get into your business and your story? Can you just talk a bit about what you believe about that living orgasmic, orgasmically? What does that look like? Well, it's really about reawakening our innate sensitivity. I always say our first language is actually energy. Beyond words, beyond English, French, Spanish, it's actually energy is our first language. And we spend so much time in our minds thinking and figuring things out and planning that we've forgotten our first language. And when you reawaken to that truth, you start feeling more. And one of the things you feel is the life force energy in everything. And life force energy at its core is orgasmic. It's creation, right? And how do we create like as human beings, it's through that orgasmic energy, through sexual energy. So it makes sense that everything has this frequency in it. And that's what living orgasmically is. It's not like about just having tons of sex, which that's really fun, but it's about not being ashamed of that energy, not being ashamed of your sexual energy, not being ashamed of your sexual sexuality, because that shame covers up your ability to tune into the orgasmicness and everything. So when you can clear that shame, then you can feel the love and the bliss and the ecstasy in everything, like in trees, in flowers, in plants, in your food, in your own breath. Wow, that sounds like a high bar. Okay, so that can feel scary, right? With training we've all received. What have your clients experienced after doing this work with you? I would say the biggest thing that I help people with is feeling safe. And, and getting that safety into their bodies. Because whether it's trauma from this lifetime or past lifetimes where, you know, they misused their sexual power um, or it was abused, like when you can clear all of that and we store that in the cells of our body, then you feel safe again. And so feeling safe is like the number one thing I would say that most of my clients feel like and consistently share with me that they just feel safe to be themselves safe and light. Like there's no burden anymore. There's not the weight of beliefs or, you know, lineage, their parents or their cultural uh, belief systems that got placed upon them that they just took on unknowingly. What is the best part of this as you're walking this up yourself and teaching this to others? What's your favorite aspect of this? I mean, there's, there's so many because I have so many like magical experiences or miracle experiences where there's, you know, clients where they have a physical thing that is manifested and that gets healed, like aligning them into their true nature, which is feeling safe and comfortable and aligned in sexual energy, like heals things within their body from gut challenges to, you know, actual injuries to their genitals. So that's just like always just so powerful to just see how powerful our energy is and our own alignment is for just healing the physical body. And then the other piece is experiencing and knowing that they're experiencing like love in a way that they have never experienced it. And it's their own. It's like they're self-sourced. They realize it's not outside of them. It's all within them. And it's so rewarding to watch someone's heart open and then tap into orgasmic energy from a place different than they used to, where they thought it was just in sex or just in their genitals, but it's like, it's in every part of their body. So this ecstasy, this joy, this absolute bliss, that's a hard word for a lot of people with certain training to even say. 
like to even say orgasmic, live an orgasmic life, that's that causes fear. And you know, some I know this firsthand. It's like we're trained to push it away, not talk about it. It's something that happens, but you probably shouldn't enjoy life too much, or else you're sinning, or else you're bad. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's been this sort of a repression of like, don't be too joyful. Don't have too much pleasure. Like pleasure is a bad thing. Like where did we decide that that's bad? If everything is energy <laughs> and life is a reflection of whatever vibration we are being, don't you think that vibrating in pleasure, in joy and in bliss is actually the key to living a life that you love? Versus one in shame, which is a contractive energy, which is a denser energy, a denser frequency. So, you know, why we chose this as humans? I mean, there's all sorts of theories. I prefer to just focus on like remembering the truth. Like it doesn't really matter why we've been shamed or told. It's a lot to do with how powerful we are or when we're aligned in our orgasmic essence, when there is nothing to be ashamed about, you are in power. So when we watch a two-year-old walking around, I remember my daughter, my daughter was two years old and a family member didn't realize the impact of their words. And my daughter was just wearing uh, jeans and cute little two-year-old and her, you know, her gut sticking out, you know, her little two-year-old's dad is so cute. And this family member, probably unknowingly, but made fun of and pointed out that her gut sticking out. And she looked at me, she was like two or two and a half, and came to me to scoop her up. And I had to say, Morgan, your your stomach is out. You know, I had to immediately, because shame was trying to come in and she was just in bliss mode running around. And now she was like, oh no, am I not safe? Am I not good enough? So how are you facilitating the healing or helping people claim that healing themselves when there's deeply rooted stuff whether it's around sexuality or just creativity or just joy or their bodies yeah well the body is a big one for sure like i help a lot of clients move through shame around their body and i mean there's so many reasons as to where that gets put in place whether it's like what your daughter experienced where there's like a little trauma like that, that becomes a big one where all of a sudden now she's running around with this belief system. Like I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with my body. So one, there's like, you know, I do, I'm like five times certified transformational coach and how I healed a lot of my core things was through this like inner child facilitation that I call return to love that I learned from one of my teachers. And when the energy asks me to do that, then that happens during my sessions. And what's so powerful about this process and and why I love it so much is that when I healed one of my core wounds around grief and around my mom and around being abandoned, all of this bliss came into my body. And that's when I got to see that when we are able to return those energies to love, which that energy of trauma, whether it's from someone pointing out something that's wrong with you to really, really horrific ones like being raped or sexually abused, which I've worked with both ends of the spectrum. At the core, we have to rewrite that memory into the divine truth. And you can't rush it because for each individual, it's different. So you can't just slap like a spiritual belief of like everything happens for a reason on top of these core things if they're still in the body. So what I help clients do is go back to that energy, let that little one, that two-year-old who didn't have the ability to share and, and like process that and clear that and then bring in the divine self and the angels. And this is where it's like the spiritual blends with a little bit of the somatic work and rewrite the truth of that. And, you know, I'm not going to like share exactly how I do that here, because if somebody was going to listen it, unless you're doing the process, like your mind won't understand that that's actually possible. But I've had clients with really, really, really like things that you don't think are forgivable, be able to move into an alignment 
with their divine self, where their divine self showed them why that occurred, where that was serving, like all the layers to it, to where they can move into total alignment and forgiveness. And then that clears the energy and then they're free. And then they don't have to manifest an illness or manifest something in their body or manifest things in the external world that are there to just try to help them clear this energy because that's what patterns are. It's not because anyone's a bad person. It's just, it's the universe, source, love, God, just saying, I love you so much, but you can't keep running around with this core belief that isn't serving you. So here's this ex experience to help you clear it. That you can choose to clear it without having an experience by like working with someone like me. <laughs> Beautifully put. I've been around the mountain many times, many, many times. And I know what you speak of. And I didn't, until I was really willing to face what I needed to face, I would blame externals. I would blame this, blame God, blame this, blame. And really, it was just, I needed to learn a lesson. And no shame in that. I just need yeah. to learn a lesson. Exactly. Yeah. And then sometimes the core thing isn't even about your parent, it's actually with God. Like that was my, a lot of my core stuff was like, I don't trust source. I don't trust God. And there was a lot that needed to go in order for that relationship to shift. So sometimes it's like, maybe you've done a lot of healing, but you haven't even gone to the very bottom to where there's like, oh no, but you still don't trust. <laughs> wow, Arlie, this is just such a wonderful interview. What would you say to someone that's they're hearing this and they're like, hey, I'm there. I, I don't trust. I don't feel safe. I know there's trauma. Where do they start to begin? That is a really great question. So one of the things that is probably the most powerful things that we can do as a human being is to wonder and to ask questions. So if you are living with some pain and trauma and you have an awareness like this isn't serving me, then you start wondering, I wonder how I can clear this. I wonder, source and the angels, could you help me? And you, so it's like a prayer mixed with a question. And in that space, then the perfect being or the perfect modality or whatever it is will literally just manifest and show in your life. So start with a question and start with wonder and let source and the angels provide the pathway and the solution. How can I repair this trust? Will you show me how? I don't know how, but I'm willing. That's the number one thing. You have to be willing, but you don't have to know how. I love that. There's a famous quote that says, unless you become like little children, you will never taste or experience the kingdom of heaven. And really to me, what you're talking about, that orgasmic bliss is heaven on earth. I want to experience the heaven on earth now. And I've seen in my life, the more I'm willing to become like a child, to be curious and not judgmental and wonder and explore and not judge, not shame myself, nothing. It's like life becomes orgasmic. It becomes blissful. Yes. Yep, exactly. And like, that's how you expand your sex life as well. You wonder instead of in a conclusion of like, I already know that this feels good. It's like, well, wonder what it'd be like to be touched for the first time. I wonder how every moment can be new. If you're with the same partner for years, wonder, and you will have a new experience with your partner every single time. I love how you're just bringing it back to, it's like the baseline of all discoveries. I would, I, I wonder if it's just going, here's the 16 ingredients in the kitchen. You don't have to use all 16 all the time. You can use four. You can use six. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, this is, it's all actually simple. And we all sort of know this. Like if you can ask questions and then consciously choose to just love everything because <laughs> your true nature is to love. It's not to hate. It's not to stress. It's literally just loving everything all the time. It's actually much easier to love than it is to like not love but we have conditioned ourselves to believe like no it's more fun to like repel or stress or try to figure something out 
or to be in judgment about this. And I like, like to tie this back to sex because I see it all the time. It's like, there's so many people that have an expectation or like an, it's goal related or an outcome, or if like a man's not hard enough or whatever, he goes into judgment immediately instead of like, Ooh, I wonder, or like, Oh, I still love you body. Right. The minute our bodies do something that we're like, oh, I don't like this. We don't go into I love you. We go into what's broken and I need to fix it. But what would happen if we went into love instead? And so I've I know that myself, I've judged myself from being critical. So. So what would that what is, okay, what does that look like? So just when your body shows up in a way something in your body shows up in a way that you don't you don't aspire to be you're like oh but i want it to be better than this then you respond with what well how would you respond to your two-year-old daughter well there you go i just wanted to well i did i scooped her up and just said her name's morgan i said i remember i said i just said sweetie you're beautiful as you are and you know don't receive those words just and she, she immediately, um, I could feel her spirit relax because she was, she, she was felt threatened and unsafe. And then with me, she, and then after I did that, I, she saw how angry I get, not towards her, but towards the energy, towards those harmful words and the curses, the spells. So, yeah. So anyone that's saying that to someone else, that's what they're doing to themselves. So the remedy for them is also not anger. It's also to love that part of them that thinks that doesn't know that they're also worthy of love. In the end, it all comes back to being worthy of love and my belief, am I worthy? Am I actually lovable? Will I be alone? Will I be, you know, that's amazing. Yeah, but you're here, you're living, you're breathing. So I'm pretty sure you're loved. <laughs> well, uh, aptly put okay oh, early yeah. so what is your practice look like specifically what do you do uh so i blend you know a, a bunch of different healing modalities that i was like guided and channeled i channel basically i'm a channel i created a practice like a i guess a modality that i call tantric reiki that blends energy healing with tantric practices. And then I infuse the transformational coaching and guidance. And then I also work with ascended masters and angels in the spiritual realm, in addition to using sound and crystals and really all different modalities that ultimately are about elevating and uplifting energy. And I have a specialty in the realm of sexual healing, whether that's couples that want to take their sex life to the next level. And you don't have to have things wrong to want to know like how to expand, right? And so learning how to play with energy changes your abilities as a lover and also just keeps things really interesting. And in so many ways, like we could just go on a whole tangent about all the fun things that can happen sexually when you are open to expanding and learning how to play with energy and really keeping yourself in alignment with source during the experience because sex isn't physically it's between two people but when you're having a soul sexual experience it's really about two beings fully aligned in love like playing and then sex moves out of need into expansion and so I help couples with that or couples that are now disconnected, or it's an area where a lot of the times that's the first thing to go in a relationship. So learning how to come back into harmony with that beautiful opportunity, because when you have a partner, like sex is this place where you can both be full, fully vulnerable and also deepen your spiritual connection and experience what it's like to have your psychic gifts and your spiritual gifts and like all of these amazing things 
And then I like work with individuals as well, whether it's men or women, I would say I really specialize in helping men connect into their heart and open their heart because most men function from, you know, their mind during sex and or visuals. And that's a lot of porn addiction, right? Or, and that causes things later in life, like not being able to stay erect or all sorts of things without needing it to be harder, faster, like more and more stimulation. So retraining people's minds and bodies into what it's like to slow down and actually get turned on by energy, which doesn't require anything outside of you. <laughs> wow. Which doesn't require anything outside of you. That's quite the statement. Because in a culture that unfortunately celebrates the porn, which I've seen the science on it, it literally screws a man's brain up for a woman. Like it, it makes you more stupid every time you look at it. And you can repair, but I, I was used to be hooked on porn when I was younger, even until a number of years ago. And as I got off it, I actually felt everything improve because I was a slave to it. I didn't realize it was robbing me of my life force. Yeah. I was wasting who I was. Yeah. And it teaches disconnect, right? Because you're not actually listening to your body. So that's like the number one thing is like your cock, your pussy, like none of that is like, it's not a machine. It's a, it's a, every part of your body is actually a being. It's a conscious being. And if it's doing things you don't want it to do, or it's not responding anymore because you've been so rough and overstimulating and women can do this too. Not like they may not be as addicted to porn as men are, but vibrators, I'm not a huge fan of because it also teaches a artificial stimulation and it completely numbs you, I think, to a certain extent. There's a time and place for women that have never experienced an orgasm, like that might be where they need to start. But eventually I always encourage all of my clients to really let go of any artificial stimulation because you don't actually even need touch to have an orgasm doesn't mean I'm saying forever not have touch it just is it changes your relationship when you have an orgasm fully from the penetration of love in your heart from source you're like holy shit this is unending this is infinite orgasm from penetration of love or source or god in your heart well, yeah. that's really, isn't that really what the whole experience of is? Isn't it supposed to be like a gateway to the divine, like to connect both with my, who I can be and God and yeah. source? Like, isn't it that supposed to be the whole thing? It is. I mean, that is what orgasm is. That is the one time that people that aren't even spiritual are actually spiritual because they're fully present. You cannot, you have to be fully present to experience an orgasm, even if it's for one second that second where you're opening, you're opening into pure oneness. That's why it feels so good because that is your true state. And so what I invite people into is that that is available in the sexual experience and beyond it. And then even within the sexual experience, it's not, doesn't have to be a 10 second thing and it doesn't have to be forced. In fact, if you don't force it and you follow energy and you play with energy, you're going to have a much more expansive, infinite, unending to where you don't even care if there's like a finish because there's no finish. It's infinite. I love the principles you're talking about because I've seen it. It's true in everything, in business, in friendship. If there's force involved, it's not in flow. And then things get fucked up. Like I've experienced fucking my own life up by forcing anything, forcing workouts when I damaged myself because I wasn't listening to my body. Or forcing friendships when we both knew it was over. Yeah. Yeah. Like so much of life. And one of the things I, they tell like my guides and all of that, that have really created this practice through me, remind me all the time that like all of life is like really about listening and listening to guidance or downloads, asking questions and listening to energy. What do animals do, right? Like they listen to frequency. That's why they know if something's coming, like my cat will go outside and she sits and waits before she even walks down the sidewalk because she's waiting 
for the cars that she could hear energetically coming <laughs> that I like, she knows they're coming way sooner than I do, but that's because she's listening to energy. Like she's aware we're all, we all have these gifts. We've just shut them down. And so what I'm inviting everyone into is like, let's reawaken these gifts because it's actually the key to success in business, in life. It's the key to feeling loved and happy and healthy. And it's way more fun and it's natural to us. But you have to slow down a little and the mind doesn't like that at all. But when you learn how to slow down and listen, guess what? Time expands because time's not real anyway. So you learn how to like expand and play. And it's just a much more satisfying way to live. And it's more magical. Like things show up. And all you did was put a thought into the field. Or you pointed your consciousness in one direction. And then the universe was like, here you go. <laughs> wow. Aureli. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. Um, thank you for being on Empowered Ever TV. This was... This was um, fantastic. It's, it's an understatement. I'll be tagging you in this interview. Please put any links you have so people here can connect with you. Your message is challenging, but it's inspiring. And for me, I know it. there's so much truth in what you said, but it's scary to pre-programmed minds. It's very scary. Absolutely. Yes. And I've had people like, I had to get to a point where it doesn't really matter to me whether people believe me or not, because it's not even about belief. I'm just here to plant the seed and maybe that sprouts in this lifetime or another, or I just plant a seed and you think it's crazy and not possible. And you have all these excuses and reasons as to why. And that's okay because on an energetic level, this is an activation just in itself. What just happened here? There's a frequency that is going into everyone who watches this, their bodies. And that's my purpose. Like when you emanate love, when any of us emanate true love and joy, it heals everyone around us. And the key is to not be attached to what happens with that and what they do with it. Wow. Thank you for <laughs> what love looks like, and what it sounds like. Thank you for where you're showing up. What a gift. Empower Network TV, if you've been listening today. Wow. Yeah, thank you for being here, Arlie. And um, any last closing words before we end the broadcast? Well, just thank you for creating a space for this and for this to be shared. And I'm so grateful because setting up these kinds of things the human side of stuff is not my expertise always <laughs> so i'm always just so grateful when there's beings that are that create these platforms or these places where i can just be and it's just such a gift so thank you thank you arley my pleasure we'll end it here and thanks to tv for watching please connect with arley and she will drop any link she has